beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed This is a very powerful teaching that seeks to show you how you can become a voice. You can represent the voice of God to a generation and you can rise to a position of kingdom influence. Remember, we're still in a season where God has declared that he's lifting men. Acts chapter 13 and verse 36. Please give it to us. Just sit where you are. Just sit where you are. Jakatoske Pradishka la Prendikeriba Reketo Kasada Balada Bakote Arabash Shekete Paradu Sekete Bali Araba Something is lifting from your life Sheka Paruta Siada Lifting from your life Sheba Kotosi Lifting from your life Sheketoski Liabara I change that situation now I change that situation now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost I change that situation now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I change that situation now. For David, please give us Amplified. He says, for David, after he had served God's will and purpose and counsel, but he served it in his own generation. He said, fell asleep and was buried. But he said, David served God in his generation. It's not enough to serve God is enough to serve God within the context of a generation. Are we together now? There are mandates that are left for generations. Every generation has a spiritual curriculum about God and his purposes that God intends for them to accomplish. And hear me, your relevance within a generation is predicated upon your understanding your generation and knowing the corporate mandate that God has put upon that generation. You can live within a generation 
and serve God but serve God in a way and manner that does not influence a generation it's not enough to serve God you must serve God in a way and a manner that brings the purposes of God to a generation and this is what I want to teach you tonight he said David served God's will and purpose and counsel in his own generation not another generation everyone that the Bible records that was used by God was used within the context of a generation listen very carefully if you miss relevance within your generation then you have missed relevance forever are we together I think I was teaching in Lagos during the younger gilded program and I gave them an illustration no matter how anointed I am anybody above 55 years is not within the scope of my generation no matter how I love them they will be blessed from my life but they will quickly go to Papa Oyedeko and Papa Deboe because those are the voices of that generation are you getting what I'm teaching you now it's not enough to seek relevance you must seek relevance within the context of a generation your voice does not speak to every generation there is a generation where your relevance is allocated to God sends men not just to places he sends men to a generation and if you cannot identify your generation of impact and influence then you will live a very useless life and David after he served the will of God there are some things that are allowed in other generations that are not allowed in others are we together every time God was about to move within the scope of a generation he would find a man or he would find men and then begin to introduce them to the dynamics of relevance and greatness contending for kingdom relevance there are things that we need to know if we are to rise to a point of kingdom influence and relevance and have taught us again and again in this place that kingdom relevance is very important to have kingdom influence and it is also very important to be able to speak the purposes of God when you are unable to represent the purposes of God within a generation then you may not be able to to influence that generation Judges chapter 6 please very quickly we are going to read from verse 11 Judges chapter 6 this was an encounter that the Lord had with a young man called Gideon verse 11 and there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak which is in Ophrah and pertained to Joash and all of that and his son Gideon Gideon threshed wheat by the wine press to hide it from the Midianites remember they were being threatened by the Midianites and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said the Lord is with thee O mighty man of Pharaoh and Gideon answered and said unto him O my Lord if the Lord be with us why then is this befallen us and where be all his miracles which our father told of saying does the Lord not do this and that and that for him and the Lord looked upon him and said go in this thy might and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites have I not sent thee 
it didn't look to Gideon like he was sent but God said have I not sent thee with a message and a mandate to a people next verse 15 and he said unto him listen listen carefully he said oh my lord wherewith shall I save where not the whole world Israel you have sent me with a message but that message is to a people and a context he said behold this is my limitation my family is poor in Manasseh and I am aside from the fact that the family is poor I am the least in my father's house look at the excuse he's giving God is telling him I am lifting you and then he says I cannot do the assignment because of two things one poverty There is a relationship between poverty and lack of influence and lack of relevance. Number two, lack of greatness. I am small. My family is small. And yet even in that family, I am the least in my father's house. 16. Alleluia. Alleluia. And the Lord said unto him, Surely, I will be with thee and because of my presence with thee thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man follow me very carefully tonight <laughs> Jesus Psalm 24 and verse 6 he said this is the generation not this is the person listen carefully this is the generation that has a mandate as a generation to seek God but to seek God in the similitude of Jacob Listen very carefully. He's saying the word, O Jacob, there is O God of Jacob. He said there is a generation mandated by God to seek God in the similitude of Jacob. Are we together now? When God tells you to search for him, he looks for human references that are reflections of that expectation. Are we together? When God wants to teach believers to love, he will lift up John and tell them to study his life. When God wants to teach people how to walk in the blessing, he lifts up Abraham and tells them to study his life. In James chapter 5, when God is teaching people how to pray strategic prayer, he lifts up a prophet called Elijah and says, study him. When God wants to teach people on faith, he lifts up Peter when God wants to teach men on revelation, he lifts up Paul the apostle. Are we together now? So God is very figurative in his expression. For you to understand this scripture, you have to go back to Genesis 28 and Genesis 32 and study how Jacob sought God. Because he said the mandate that was on one man, Jacob, is a mandate that one day will come upon a generation that a generation will be mandated to seek the face of God in the similitude of Jacob are we together God appears to Jacob in chapter 28 and until that time listen carefully there was no God of Jacob when God revealed himself he said I am the God of Abraham there was a way I taught Abraham to seek me. There were possibilities about me that no one had known. But my encounter with Abraham introduced the world of men to these possibilities. The God of Abraham. Then Isaac the son used the God of Abraham to create the God of Isaac. The God of Abraham was a springboard. The mysteries of God that his father knew. And out of his own dealings with God, 
God created a name called the God of Isaac. By the time we get to Psalms here, Jacob had done his own too. And God names himself by a man's experience with him. Jacob's encounter is so powerful that God's covenant people were not named after Abraham. They were not named after Isaac. They are not called the Abrahamites. They are not called the Isaacites. They are called the Israelites, not even the Jacobites. So powerful was this encounter that God said, the generation that wants to know me must seek me in the similitude of Jacob. You want to influence a generation? God is lifting her, Dr. Alima. I'm seeing her climb a ladder. The Spirit of God is lifting her to a higher level of influence. That's what, that's what I'm seeing in the Spirit. You want to be relevant to a generation. If you love God and you desire that through your life His purposes be established, then you must contend for kingdom influence. I've taught you again and again in this place that kingdom advance is a product of two things. One is global evangelization. Number two, influence. The purposes of the kingdom must be established in the hearts of men through evangelism and then through influence must be established across every strata of human activities. Are we together? So you must know how to birth the purposes of God. And I want you to follow me as I share with you. There are certain things in the spirit that when you touch, you will never be irrelevant. Please listen to me. But most of what it takes to be relevant, believers are not seeking it. We are seeking nonsense all around. Yet we are looking for kingdom relevance. The things that make for relevance in this kingdom are spiritual in context. First, in that order, we are searching for mundane and carnal things that do not have the fortitude to give men a voice in a generation. That's why I shared with you the secret place before coming to this topic. And David served his generation. I hope you know listen very carefully I hope you know that when the Holy Ghost came upon the Apostles in Acts chapter 2 from then onwards the strategic Apostles that were listed in the Bible were not the only ones who received there were many other people but a few people grew to a point where their voices echoed through history to the point that they were captured in this Bible. When you study history, not just Bible history, you study history and archaeology, you will find out that many other spiritual things happen concurrently as at the time certain historic writings were being written. Spiritual things. But they were not relevant to the context and the program of God within a generation. It's amazing how people think because they are born again or they have a church or they have revelation they will continue to be relevant in God's program for all seasons no sir I have seen extremely anointed men and women of God and I have seen the boundaries of their relevance with respect to a generation I have seen people who are not too anointed but I've seen them at the epicenter of a generation's relevance there are men and women who would look at people like Joel Austin and look at people like Joyce Mayer. And um, if you're one who is into the things of the spirit, fasting, prayer, with all honor and respect, you may not so much appreciate their ministry because of the context of their communication. It sounds very basic. Yet, in a way that looks as though it's a charm, they have commanded the attention of a generation effortlessly, unbendingly, 
they have entered their sabbath in relevance and yet again and again we find anointed men miracle workers still crouching scrounging at the doorways the corridors of relevance understand what i'm teaching you tonight and you will enter your sabbath there will be no need for competition there will be no need for unhealthy comparison because you will know that the keys of a generation has been given to you <laughs> you have captured my heart consume my heart with your love generation he peeped into another generation that was not his own and he wanted to still negotiate and God said no 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 you have tried Abba he wanted to start building a temple to start the mandate of another generation and God said you have tried you have tried you have tried David you have served God you have shed blood in the process just relax let your son take over and he said I must still contribute let me gather the materials and God said this man David you you are a man after my own heart and because of that you may not serve in that generation but i will show you look at the messiah and david saw a vision the lord said to my lord sit down that was the coronation of jesus he said david so long he, he mastered his generation there was no other voice speaking samuel was a man who held the keys to the voice of God in his generation. You could brag and talk nonsense, but if you did not find Samuel, you would keep crying. It wasn't pride. Oh, God is everywhere. Yes, but there are gatekeepers. Samuel. Samuel. To the point that when a man was about to step into the anointing, God had to use a coincidence to lead him to Samuel. The Bible says of Samuel that none of his words, none of his words fell to the ground. But remember before Samuel started, there was a man called Eli that served the priesthood of his time. There was a period of more than 500 years of darkness from Malachi till the appearance of John after prophet Malachi it was somewhat a very dark season for the church no prophecy no nothing everything and all of a sudden a young boy born to a man who began to manifest a level of priesthood called John the prophet was in the wilderness and all of a sudden for the first time they would encounter a prophetic voice they had lost touch with prophecy and then john was so wise he knew when his relevance was coming to an end and when jesus show up showed up this is what he said that i may decrease i have exhausted myself jesus listen John remained relevant because he announced Jesus and he kept upholding Jesus. The moment he brought Jesus down, he died too with him. Although his mandate was over, he said, who is the next? Let me uphold him. Let me give you this secret. I want to teach you something powerful. If you are in ministry, never fight your sons. 
a father that fights his sons loses his honor a son that fights his father loses his life there are punishments allocated for the various offenses every time you see god lifting a man join to lift it if the last move of god always fights the next move of god chances are that when we are in the program of god and a shift begins to happen and god begins to raise other voices the the threat of feeling irrelevant begins to make people to not want to partner with what god is doing and they now begin to fight it and you cannot fight what is of god you will go down and so they go down together with it do you know why david's name still remained relevant lord you will not allow me build the temple you said i've shed innocent blood i would have been offended and david's name would have gone down but he said no solomon i will gather the materials for you build the house i will gather the material everybody who partnered with everything god was doing also remained relevant that was the wisdom of the woman with the alabaster box i'm a prostitute i mean i don't have a name but jesus can i partner with your relevance and jesus said anywhere they talk about me this woman too her story will be remembered there are people all across this nation and all across the earth who by either because their assignment has come to an end or their lack of spiritual alignment has edged them out of god's program once upon a time they were at the epicenter of god's program but either because of pride or disalignment or just the assignment coming to end you know why billy graham remained relevant he knew when he had served his generation and he created a legacy institute and all he was doing till he died was lifting all those who it was their generation and although he's dead he has been immortalized through his ability to lift men same thing with my dear mentor eternally dr miles monroe he died but his books brought him back to life he said body you can be laid to rest mind stand up and keep speaking miles monroe is still alive his body is in the grave but his mind is still in us we have kept him alive because he saw a generation one of the last books that he wrote before he died was passing it on the mystery not everybody will be relevant for our generation once upon a time papa ea adeboye grew with a generation and today he's old with that generation no matter how prophetic you are your mother would prefer to listen to papa ea adeboye than you i said it in lagos that even if i cut a human head and throw it down and carry it up and fix it back to show how powerful i am an old woman will look at me and say wow young man i'm impressed let me go to redemption camp quickly i'll see you later because even if they come for this program you were not sent to that generation the voice that grew with that generation is the voice that represents the purposes of god to them listen demons know this occultists know this believers do not know how to grow with a generation such that you become a dimension of god the four faces at the throne represented different dimensions of god what i am teaching you tonight will keep you relevant because by the time you are establishing this kingdom your generation will know you to be the face of something about god to them every time you talk of prosperity we go to some adeemi for his generation when you talk about faith and signs and wonders am i not a man of faith but you see our parents will not come to me as that reference 
I didn't grow with that generation to represent that dimension of God. I'm teaching you how you cannot be erased in the purposes of God. You want to stay relevant? It's more than making money. You must represent a dimension of God to a generation and grow with them knowing you to represent that. By the time they are established, they will educate themselves to look up to you by grace as a revelation of that dimension. Who is the Samadhi of our generation? Who is the Bishop Oyedeko of our generation? Who is the Papa Iye Adeboye of our generation? Who is the WF Kumuyo of our generation? Who is the Apostle Babalola of our generation? It's not just giving yourself titles, I'm Apostle, nonsense, I'm, I'm Prophet, rubbish. That's not the issue. It's about staying. It is your generation that will call you, not you. The Bible said they shall call you. The reward for being branded to represent a dimension of God is the name they call you. Are we together? Some of us, your ministries right now have a lot of small children and teenagers and you are embarrassed because you are hoping that rich millionaires of 60 years will start coming to your church. You better thank God for sending a generation for you to grow with them. Are we together? I remember years ago when he and I started, there were a lot of young people, students all around, and people would just look at it like a children's on the school class. And I said, oh dear. Those people that are children are now workers scattered all around. You see that? If Papa Iya Deboe says all believers in Nigeria fast for three days, whether you're a member of Redeem or not, you are going to fast. If your pastor said don't fast, you just respect him and pass and say nonsense. <laughs> you just started a church two years ago and you are telling me to disobey a man. He has represented the voice of God, not just to Nigeria, but to the world. Contending for kingdom relevance. I will never lead a group of people who are anointed and not relevant. I have studied the systems of the kingdom and I have studied the limitation of the ignorance of anointed men of God. Men and women of God, especially in this nation, are very ignorant when it comes to the strategies for kingdom advance. The scope of our relevance is building individual capacities to love God. But the strategy for kingdom advance is seldom understood. And our generation is at the mercy of a bridge, a repairer of the bridge. Otherwise, we will have very heavy spiritual capacities and lose a voice territorially. Are we together? Praise the Lord. Five keys. Let me not waste your time. Straight to the point. Five keys. You want to serve your generation? Please, I want you to listen very carefully. To become influential enough to establish the purposes of, the purposes of God within a generation. Number one, you must know God. You must know God. You want to serve the purposes of God. You must know God. Not you may know God. Not you can know God. You must have an encounter with God. Daniel chapter 11 verse 32. The Bible ties exploits even within a generation to the knowledge of God. Are we together? It says such as do wickedly against the covenant he shall corrupt by flatteries he said but the people that do know they are God they are God let me tell you what that means to know God is not just to know the general God you must know the God revealed to your generation if you are in Jacob's generation and you know the God of Abraham alone you will not be relevant in Jacob's generation Every generation has a dimension of God revealed to it. Whoever finds that dimension is the person who becomes relevant within that context. Are we blessed? But the people 
that do know their God, they shall be strong and shall do exploits. Listen to me. In this kingdom, it is your fraternity with the spirit realm that culminates to your dominion and your victory. Ask any great man. If they are honest enough, they will tell you there is a certain level in this kingdom and in the world today you cannot rise beyond without a fraternity with the realm of the spirit whether in business in ministry listen carefully career whatever it is if you ever see anyone commanding any dimension of superior results whether through occultism whether in the it's secular or whatever i can tell you beyond the secular knowledge and all of those things a time came in their lives when they became assisted by the realm of the spirit for 30 years jesus as the word the living logos was powerless but when the holy ghost came upon him that partnership turned him into christos the christ the anointed one the messiah you must know god you must know God. Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 23 to 24. Please give it to us quickly. Jeremiah chapter 9. Thus saith the Lord, not an angel, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Our generation has many wise men who are poor many wise men who are broke many wise men who are not relevant at all the bible says first things first he didn't say wisdom is not important let not the wise man glory in his wisdom let not the mighty man glory in his might let not the rich man glory in his riches 24 but let him that glorieth glory in this that he understand it and know it me that's the pride of the believer your the foundation of your confidence in life should never be because of the car that is parked outside because of the food that is on your table because of your degree that is in your drawer are we together no. all those things only make sense when you are centrally connected to God those who will be relevant in these end times, those who will defy the oppression of demons, those who will defy the causes and the yokes of culture, those who will defy all the manipulations of darkness, they are not just well-meaning people, but those who know their God, understand it and know it me. Are we blessed? You go and prescribe this to someone who wants to be great. And see how he will frown at you he won't exactly hate it he will just smile and be angry because he believes that when you want to be great just teaching business principles do this do that quickly you want to be great oh let me teach you on book publishing book publishing is the art of a that gives b this to c all those things are rubbish if you don't know god one yoke from your village can rewind your success is all you are you are you are laboring for nothing the bible says it is vain to wake up in the morning hear me nigerians wake up in the morning and sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow that's why many hard-working people are angry they look at life and say it's not fair and you are right I was a graduate since 1961 and I've not built a house now. And look at all these small, 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 small boys. Sorry for you. The foundation of relevance for every generation is not just your connection to God, but your knowledge of God. When last did you ever see this being prescribed as a formula for greatness? And please, those of you here who are into personal development and the rest is wonderful. When you are teaching the secular, you go ahead. But when you are mentoring people, let the foundation of growth be the realm of the spirit. Are we together? 
you know you talk like this and a lot of people believe that you don't know what you're saying you don't know anything about secular success you're wrong you're wrong you must know God Jacob had an encounter with God a nation has never been named after you a nation has never been named after your father and my father listen carefully a nation has never been named even after your president there is i'm not sure of any nation in the world that has been named after a man so when a man is so relevant that god's nation is named after him study how he rose up like that the foundation was not intelligence the foundation was an encounter Genesis chapter 28 when you read from 11 to 17 he lighted upon a place and lay down on a stone to sleep and the Bible says when you begin to read down to 17 that a ladder was connecting the earth to heaven listen very carefully and then at the top of it give us verse let's see verse 13 or 14 and listen behold the lord stood above it let's hear what god is saying god said i am the god of who god himself is calling himself the god of abraham so it's not something men are calling god himself called himself not i am the king of kings i am the god of abraham i am the god of isaac stop no other person had been interested in knowing me enough to add to the list that means it was never supposed to just stop as the God of Israel. I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac. I am the God of Jacob. Uh -huh. I am the root of David. David added himself. I am this and that. Then Joshua Selman too comes to add himself. So that our children, when you say, I'm not saying you should say the God of Joshua Selman. I'm just teaching you how it is. When you say the God of Joshua Selman, it's not the same as the God of Abraham. I don't know what Abraham saw. I don't know what, what his business was with God. But there is a dimension. You hear the people say the God of our fathers had appeared to me. At that time, Jacob had not yet been in the list. He says, the land where thou will this and that and that and that. And then Jacob woke up in the morning and said, the Lord was in this place and I knew not how terrible he said this is the house of god the gates of heaven the next encounter will be in chapter 32 and verse 22 please give it to us we are reading down to 30 chapter 32 from verse 22 22 32 22 chapter 32 and verse 22 let me read it from here chapter 32 and verse 22 and he rose up that night Jacob now and took his two wives and his two women servants and his eleven sons and passed over forth Jabbok 23 we're reading to 30 and he took them and sent them over the brook and sent over that he had 24 and Jacob was left alone Jacob got to a point where everything that represented his relevance, he had to give it away. Wives go, possessions go, everything go. And when he was alone, the reason why many of us may never encounter God is because there are many things together with us. Your money is still there. Your house is still there. Every other thing is there. But when you are left alone, it says, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of day 25 and when he saw that he prevailed not against him he touched the strongest part that means you have been strong by yourself without me i see that you so love your degree to a point that every time i say i'm lifting you you smile and says because i'm an engineer of course i should be lifted it's because i'm a doctor it's because i'm an architect lord i know that contract and god's touched that area and said it may not always be by what you call strength it is by my strength and the hall of jacob's tie was out of joint and he wrestled with him 26 
And he said, let me go, God now, for the day breaketh. And he said, Jacob, may that be someone's testimony. Oh, that you say, Lord, in this generation, I don't just want to be a story. I will hold on to you. And people say, look, everybody is getting a job. Oh, everybody is moving. And you say, just leave me. May God bless you. But Lord, I cannot leave this place. You see, many graduates make a foolish mistake. The moment they write their last exam, they pour mineral on their head and joke around and play around tap water and immediately they are done. They carry their bag and run and join the queue of confusion. When you should stay back and have a two weeks retreat and lie down near one tree and say, Lord, I'm not leaving this place until I... F what will I tell my generation? That I went to school for five years? Is that enough to give you a voice? I entered somewhere in Abuja and the receptionist had three MSCs. Receptionist, three MSCs. I said, if you come to this place and it's grammar you want to talk, you will be a foolish person. Three, two of them were abroad and then one in the country. Receptionist. Don't think it's a small place. A salary can... Let me just keep quiet. No, don't, don't think receptionist like you are thinking one small kiosk. No, that's a place where only kings enter. And I said, my God, you need more in this life. Brothers and sisters, I'm not teaching you to be lazy. But I'm telling you that if you want to command a voice, you can carry your first class degree and get a job and meet somebody who was the son of a herbalist who also got the job with you. And they say, we are considering someone for promotion and he's laughing at you already. He's pitying you because he knows one week to the promotion interview your leg refuses to move from your bed and you come to the office and he says well just to let you know that you had me you had that they say my father is a herbalist <laughs> the wicked world that we live in i know someone who was promoted true story sat down on his chair for the first time and died on the chair there went to consult all kinds of people some Habali says his wife that killed him some other Habali says the guy that mops the the office that killed him it doesn't matter he's dead he's dead who killed you it's not a, you are dead can you know God to a point that someone is concocting a charm the first portion he drops fire response fire and says no no there are some touch knots Ah, ah. he suffered no man to do them wrong he reproved kings for their sake saying touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm listen something happened i think it was last week one of our dear ones some of these touts these boys around that catch people collect phones and the rest and i got to hear that one of our dear ones as he went home he was whether he was on his way going home or he went home I think he went home and then went to get something or so afterwards that some of these scouts these guys just attacked him they attacked him collected phone this they caught him like this with a knife like a ram they showed it to me when i was in lagos over the over the, the, the week i just came back today and then when i saw it i was just laughing i allowed them the protocol and the rest to shut the door i got down on my knees I said, Lord, except I am not anointed. The person who did this thing. Listen. When I said that, by evening, they had caught them. They are right now, as you call Alex outside, the police now. Right now. Do you know how they caught them? They, after that prayer, the guy now went to go and waylay somebody. He didn't know he was a police officer. Then they caught him and packed all the phones. And the phone they picked was the guy's own. They called and his friend was with him in the hospital. As it is today, they are carrying him to the hospital to identify him. And only God knows what they will do for him. Do you know God that much? That the bowing of your knees can manipulate anything in the earth realm. See, let me tell you. If you don't understand this, most times you would think people are boasting. When someone says, I will pray for you. You've heard that thing? 
I will pray for you. Just say, pray for us so, because you know his prayer is powerless. But there are people, if they say they will pray for you, rejoice. They are not using your faith. He said, for this cause, I, Paul, bow my knees to the Father. I'm praying for your sake. Ah! Jesus prayed for us. So, John 17. He prayed for us. When I was coming, the military people came to greet me. I said, please, you people should use those boys to teach people in this area that there are still apostolic and prophetic voices. We are not just acting nonsense here. And then all kinds of young boys just go and continue oppressing people. What devil? What nonsense? I'm saying it again. Let me announce across this territory that any gentleman, any lady, whether you are here or not, that gets up to manipulate people, boggle their house, I command the earth to fight them from tonight. That some of them will go to bed and lie down and not wake up. The territory should know that God has voices. It's not by coming on TV and making noise. Elijah said there shall be no rain. We need to sanitize this spiritual environment. Halagbara by the mighty God. Hey, let's go. But the people you don't need to know everything about God you just need to know the dimension of him revealed to you I don't boast of knowing everything about God there are some things about God I totally don't know but let me tell you there are dimensions of God that he has shown me by his grace your pursuit if you want to be relevant to a generation you must know these dimensions of God Going to church is not enough. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Praying and fasting is not knowing God. There are only tools to help you know God. One of the major reasons why people don't know God is they don't give Him time. Be careful with this I'm busy, I'm busy. You need to give God time to know Him. Our generation, we pray, we fast, we sing, we go to church but we are unwilling to give God time to know him if you see people doing three days fast there's fire on the mountain real fire on the mountain Lord where are you then the fire goes down and you leave him that you sit down and say Lord I want to know you what message do I have to my generation You must know God. I'm challenging every one of us here. Please tell yourself the truth and stop allowing people to just clap for you and say, Wow, prayer warrior. Wow, fasting giant. Wow, word, word, revelation, signs, signs and wonders producer. And you move around fooling yourself that you know God. And life tests you, and there is nothing about God that you know. It says that I may know him. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, reveal yourself. Reveal yourself to me, O oh God. That I may know you. Lord, I'm tired of ordinary Christianity without power. Show me your glory.
show me your grace hallelujah there are things you must know about God there are things I know about men um, I used to have what I, I, I cannot I can't remember who exactly but there used to be one gentleman years ago I used to tease him he looked very powerless as a man but you don't see any power you can almost shake him and I said if they ever tell me you fought somebody I won't believe because I know you I know you enough to know you are not even strong to lift a sizable chair so if somebody tells you that that guy finished beating one police officer you just laugh and say except the anointing came on him there was something David knew about God that made him stand before Goliath we stand and face the challenges in life based on the knowledge of God that we have the armies of Israel had the same weapons that David would later hold but they could not confront Goliath there was something Goliath too knew he was not just big Goliath was not the only giant in the land even among the Israelites they were also giants but they stood and Goliath was roaring wicked man and David said don't mind him carry the sling said I'm going to remove this your head you will fall down I will use your sword cut it and feed the birds Goliath said am I a dog he said you will soon know when he wound that thing it was not just his hand winding it there was an anointing and he hit Goliath once Goliath himself was shocked that he fell there was something Joshua oh bless his name Joshua knew about God and he said go round don't mind all this big mountain for nothing notice that all the challenges are usually very big Jericho Goliath Red Sea so don't be surprised when yours is big why will you expect it to be small how then will God be glorified 25 years barrenness are we together there is something you need to know about God that you will stand before a generation and they'll say ma it's two years and you are not pregnant yet he said just wait and all of a sudden by the third year triplets will come nine years in three years and they'll come and say ah, you just gave birth i didn't give birth i manifested miracles don't call that is not delivery you go and try it if you get triplets show me the science of producing triplets i know something about god Where someone threatens you and says, in this office, they bow to me to rise. If you are not willing to bow to me with honorarium of one million and then respect, you are not rising. No. And everybody above you will say, just this guy is connected to the presidency. And you say, all right, sir, may God bless you. And you go back in the night and do something that will make that man call you in a hurry and sign your document. And you say just just for starters to let you know that there are men and there are men are we together someone plants a charm to kill you and he's sleeping in his room the charm meets him there physically again charm said you sent me and somebody changed my direction and brought me to the same place I remember years ago one of our lady went to meet a herbalist in this place this this one a herbalist for something like that she kept giving him money was concocting a charm for something and then the last one now he now asked for an honorarium of thirty thousand. i said her or he, he now started calling her number you better come and fulfill your audition you have made me start the charm true story you will run mad and she now ran to me came and confessed his pressure a and b and c happened i said warn that herbalist so my concern is not the charm is his life tell him that he should check in the realm of the spirit you don't speak like that if you have not met god because many people have made bold face 
when I used to counsel people in area E, some of the protocol people would testify. People who come with a leather, you would think it's mineral they are holding for me until they open it. You will now see that it's a charm. They collected it from one baba and brought it, and I said, Bring it. I look at it as a nonsense. You ask the charm to come. There is something you need to know. This world is wicked. If all you know is what your eyes have seen, you better start crying because there are arrows that fly by day. You, you don't need to offend anybody. Who are your friends? Nonsense. It's a wicked world. You mean this lady is getting married? Ah, no. We have to do something. Haba. You mean this man is the one, this young man is the one building this house? No. Ah, ah, ah. You mean is this, this young guy PhD? No. It took me 11 years to get PhD. Why will he get PhD in four years? No. You mean this young lady, five children? No way. Our world is wicked. It's not a news. Are we together? Years ago, um, one gentleman that I know got married in Kaduna. And then we went then to go and just celebrate with them. And while they were bringing the gifts, true stories. I like praying for gifts. We noticed, I was sitting down and I noticed after everybody had dropped everything. The wedding was almost over. And then a woman just came with something that looks like a bucket. Just dropped it. I tapped one of my colleagues and said, the Lord just showed me something. We opened that bucket, true story. And we, you know this bucket, you put sugar or semovita, white, this white bucket. We saw it with a stone in the middle. I lifted it. I said, you see this? This is fruitfulness, blood. That woman will get married now until her husband drives her and says, we can't marry two men. Go, let me look for a woman. I told them I said you people should just be praying on the other gift just leave me with this one can you confront the gates of darkness and go to bed if they bring a charm for you now and say sorry help me and scatter it please will you say come for koinonia on Friday or come and drop it in miracle service or say, no 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 apostle is busy bring it and you hold it and without saying any prayer from where you are holding it someone is jumping from their house and saying i won't do it again ah. may god make us a powerful generation all this ministry of just falling down and you say two people will fall the realm of the spirit is higher than that oh you need results shift in people's destiny falling down and rolling and standing up they that know their God you get up and have a dream and in that dream you see that there's obituary every month in your house you don't sit quietly and then everybody starts dying and say ah people are dying that's not the time to start disturbing me I say apostle you are sleeping ah prayer department benga promise pastor alpha Kenny no you get up and you say he's not only the God of Abraham, he's not only the God of Isaac. You are my God. You are my God. And you announce to Satan and say, if you if you near the vicinity of my family again, it's a decree, it's not pride. Know when to be a lion and know when to be a lamb. No warrior is a lamb in the face of battle. Whoever told you that this world is a playground, you must know God. Greatness is warfare. Greatness is not just an equation A plus B equals to greatness. No, sir. I say it jokingly. Only God knows the shrines on earth that my name has gone to. Maybe your Zaria city any other place oh god let him sleep and not wake up while they finish the charm i just stretch god gives men the power to lay it down and the power to take it up you must know god take the time to know god 
you don't know God by a one hour weekly service no sir you don't know God by a five minutes Bible study you don't know God by an occasional fast when there's trouble you don't know God by a fire brigade closed door retreat you give God time and say Lord I want to know you I want to know you I want to see your face I want to know you Lord I want to touch you I want to hear your voice I want to know you Lord There are many of us tonight God is calling and say stop this religion and be serious with me stop this religion i'm a deacon in my church i'm an elder i'm the chairman of marriage counseling i am the pastor in charge of choir I'm... no settle down and say lord i want to know you reveal yourself i'm tired of lying and pretending i don't have boldness because i don't know you knowing god is not becoming a pastor Listen to my message, knowing God experientially. God uses experiences to reveal men. You can't just know God. Every experience in your life now is an opportunity to know a dimension of God. Don't waste it by crying around like a fool. Say, Lord, there must be something. All of a sudden, all my money has disappeared to the point that I don't have five naira. Instead of just saying it's an attack, Lord, there is something you want to show me. El Shaddai is calling. El Shaddai, he wants to show me that he is the all-sufficient God. Don't waste your pain. Don't waste your tears. Use them as an opportunity to know something about God. Apostle have been barren five years. All right, use the opportunity to know something about God. So that the next time you are saying he can make a way in the wilderness, it's not a song, it's your life. Are we together apostle i had a dream in that dream i saw five points when my result came out i saw 2.5 cry there is something about god you need to know it is because many people don't know god that's why they don't receive some prayers notice that people receive prayers according to their level of insight about god when you pray and say in the name of Jesus, favor, amen. But when you say in the name of Jesus, someone who has no business coming to you, I call, ah, they just say amen. Careless amen that doesn't have faith in it. Because that dimension of God has not been captured. Let me give us one more and we pray for tonight. We'll continue next week. Contending for generational relevance contending for kingdom relevance those who will reign in this kingdom must be men and women who know God whether you are a businessman whether you are whatever you must know God you know sometimes sometimes I counsel people when I travel and um, while I'm counseling them the Lord begins to show me something like charms that they have in their houses or something that they tie on their waist for protection and preservation and yet they come and sit down as a man of God do you know if you are not powerful that thing will fight you in the name of praying for somebody oh God let this guy win chairmanship and that night you sleep and an old man walks you in a dream one word two words be careful and just leaves you and you wake up with headache you don't know where it's coming from and where it is going to you go to the hospital nothing for one week then he comes again say be careful then the headache stops the next time somebody comes for you to pray for him you say no please go to koinonia when dagon was put face to face with the ark of god the ark didn't remove hands to touch him they came back in the morning and met Dagon. If he just fell backwards, 
that's not honor it fell face forward may your life from tonight be a threat to the kingdom of darkness listen my prayer for you koinonia hear me is that you don't mock yourself by praying three hours and yet you are afraid of every manifestation of the valley of the shadow of death these boys that scam years ago they sent a text to my phone one i think it's a text they sent to people we are watching you now from where we are and something 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 you have, you have it's like they are threatening you maybe they are watching you through a window somewhere and i, I said look at this they can now lie to you and say go and drop hundred thousand near the green tree near your house and you would think they are really watching you whereas it's a general text they send to everybody fear can create images are we together you have a dream and in the dream dead people are coming to visit you you don't get up and say i saw my father he died 1983 thank god he's your father but what does the living have to do with the dead do you know when you see dead people in your dream i don't mean departed saints now glorified dead people in your dream that's the spirit of the grave that's not the spirit of death that's the, the grave itself has a spirit it's a magnet is calling you like you are invoking that's what is happening you don't get up and say chai nigeria said no what is nigeria shabakatos kalabata oh death where is thy sting oh grave where is thy victory you pray in tongues for five minutes distribute fire everywhere and ask that devil to use the face of your father again it's not your father it is appointed once for men to die the man you see that you are calling your father is not your father is a devil carrying the face of your father what what father your father is there enjoying in heaven and the devil is using the face of one person come come to us come we are calling you let's go home come and eat yam see palm oil what nonsense is that That's what happens to a lot of people. They just get up and an infirmity has entered their spirit. They go to the hospital and check again and again and again until they die. The living has nothing to do with it. If I see anybody I know who has died, if it is of God, departed saints in light, I know if it is a demon spirit i know there is a gulf what fellowship has light got to do with please i'm teaching you this thing if we dwell just in knowing god those who will stand and represent the purposes of god you need to look at the spirit of death eyeball to eyeball we're coming from 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 lagos and and i think it was because of the weather and the pilots too my god the plane was as if he was he was just playing around i was sleeping ask them i was sleeping ah if it will crash i will enter if i enter it will not crash ah apostle the other i don't know who that other person is and what he believes he said let the redeemed of the lord say so you know in this world don't trouble with anybody and nobody will trouble. what nonsense are you saying like that the bible said declare ye that ye might test be justified jesus prophesied that i would die but i will come back if jesus didn't say it he will not resurrect let him that glory it glory in this please brothers and sisters there are several people here we thank god for the crowds but koinonia god is not just looking for crowds god is looking for quality people that know god not just the uh, man of god pray for me man of god pray for me on everything man of god sing for me man of god worship for me when will you now build capacity to be a blessing it's all right you can start small our little children in this ministry are more spiritual than most of you these little kids you see the fire you stand near them and see the presence that oozes out of them because of the simplicity of their heart 
they are feeding with the food of adults as children pray they pray fast they fast some of them come to meet me after service my daddy is sick my this is sick i tell them darling bring your hand i place my hand and i say go and lay your hands and truly they will do it but adults they won't do it they'll just say don't don't worry apostle just rub your face with with handkerchief and give it because you are afraid of embarrassment Is God speaking to us today by the grace of God and with all humility there are things that I know about God that has brought rest to my life I show you how to be free from worry know God there are things when you know about God when others are crying you are laughing you are not laughing because you are inhuman you are laughing because of a rest that the knowledge of God has given you it was Bishop Oyedepo who said one time his wife was pregnant and all of a sudden they noticed she was spotting and then, you know, medically speaking, they said she's lost the baby and he just shouted. He said, is it a baby you are delivering or blood? My dinner, please. <laughs> Come on now. That word maintained that child in that stomach until he gave birth. Blessed is she that believes for unto her, not unto them, unto her, some of you can be listening to me and say, ah, man of God, wow, you can preach well. Life will not ask you whether you're a preacher. The way the devil hates me, if I didn't know what I'm telling you now, he would have killed me since. The devil doesn't want me to backslide, he wants me to die. So a thousand falls by your right, ten thousand by, by your side, ten thousand by your right side. Ah, ah, Pastor Alpha, you are still standing. I thought people in Kogi State don't rise after certain places. No, 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 no. I come from Zion. Ah, I thought your your father worshipped a shrine. So ah, I, I thought that the ladies in your place don't stay three years after they get married. I thought the men that come from from this state are irresponsible men say so i don't know who they are but there's something about the knowledge of god is giving me confidence can anything good come out of nazareth yes sir yes sir please prophesy one minute to yourself i live to praise your name i have no fear of what tomorrow brings, I live, I live, I live, I live to praise Your name. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. revelation of God to stamp the face of fear fear of marriage will I marry will I give birth will I have male and female what if my husband dies and leaves me what if my wife dies and leaves me will I be prosperous will the church grow the revelation of God is the antidote to fear God is love and when love is perfected in you it casts out fear Lion of Judah, my trust is in you. Alpha and Omega, hey, hey. my trust is in you. I put them on you. Hey, my trust is in you. Sing it with faith in your heart. Lion of Judah, my trust. Oh, I put him on in you. Say, my 
will continue next week. Hold hands with someone and begin to blast in tongues. Let the realm of the spirit hear your voice. Go ahead and begin to pray. Don't ask anything, just pray. But the people that do know their God, but the people that do know their God, but the people that do know their God, but the people that do know their God. I know you are a merciful God. I know you are a restoration God. I know you are a lifting God. I know you are a gracious God. I know you are a mighty God. The lifter of men. Alpha, Omega. Hallelujah. Listen. If all you know about God is that he's a merciful God, that dimension itself can take you through your lifetime. If all you know about God is that he can restore, you will never cry when things leave you. If all you know about God is that he's the God of the suddenlies, five minutes to shame, he shows up. Lord, I know you. God is a miracle work. God is you are a glorious God of the sudden list. My brother, my sister, God can wipe the shame of men. He said, have you ever heard this proverb that in one day a woman gives birth? Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I know you. I know you as a miracle worker. I know you as a destiny changer. Change my life. the shame from my life. Hey. Hey. Hallelujah. We are going to sing that song one more time. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory and the lifter of my head. That's the name that is called. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, my glory and the lifter of my head. Say it one more time. He's lifting your destiny. But thou, O Lord. Thank you.
going on here hear me i want you to leave this service standing tall and facing life with confidence where is your confidence coming from seeing that you graduated with a third class i know god but i know whom i have believed there is something about god that i know where is your confidence seeing that you have no earthly father and mother i know god where is your confidence seeing that you do not have any voice like gideon the least of your father's house but there is a god who can lift me let me give you two prayer points to round up today's meeting hallelujah listen prayer point number one i'd like you to say father use my life to surprise my generation lift your voice and pray use my life as an object of praise my life anoint me in an unusual way bless me financially in an unusual way lift me in an unusual way surprise the naysayers surprise those who have concluded about my life Number two, Lord, by your mercy, reveal yourself to me. Please pray. Everyone that asks it, receive it. Lord, I've been crying for marriage, for money, for prosperity, for anointing. But reveal yourself to me. yourself to me reveal yourself to me reveal yourself to me reveal yourself pray just a few minutes and we're done.
Listen. I speak to someone's life and destiny that you who is seen as a rejected stone, they've concluded on you in your family. They've even called you names that depict you as being a failure. But in the name of Jesus, out of that ashes of shame, out of that ashes, Shekotes Kalabakatosi Atalakatos of disappointment, out of that ashes of being a non entity, may the hand of the Lord pick you and shoot you like a star for everyone to see. I'm praying. I don't know who has concluded about your destiny. Men sit down and discuss you and they even laugh. It's true that Jesus died but he only died for three days. He didn't die forever. Rejoice not over me, my enemies. Though I fall, while you are discussing my fall, yet I rise again. I command the grace for resurrection. Arise from shame. Arise from pain. Arise from disappointment. Hear me? Some of you are in ministry here and you've not seen the grace of God and you are about to give up. Did God really call me? If he called me, why am I not getting the kind of apostles result? I bring you a word of hope. Be patient with God, oh. Because in the midst of that ashes of pain and disappointment and two members is a transgenerational anointing. Don't be too quick to give up on God. God called you to the ministry of kingdom financing. But as it is now, you don't even have transport back after Koinonia. And every time you tell people, they laugh at you. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you. God, my God, look what he's done with my life. God is a lifter. God is a blesser. God is a surpriser. Don't let no devil sit down and compartmentalize you. You are from this tribe. You are from this place. Oh, all you have is a diploma, not a master's. All you have is a degree, not a PhD. Oh, you don't have any godfather anywhere. What rubbish is that? Have you not learned that with God, with God, with God, without God, some things are not possible. But when he comes into the equation, with God, without God, I cannot rise up. Without God, I cannot prosper, but with God. When he holds your hands and says, son, let's go. Don't be afraid of the giants that stand. No. Hear me. The Lord is comforting many of us. There are giants on everyone's mountain. You are not the only one with giants. When you watch people laugh, it's because they have learned how to keep Goliath down. Now, thanks be to God who causes us always. Successful people are not people without challenges. They are people who have mastered the art of victory. They know when to dance when others are crying. They know when to speak when others are quiet. Ah! They know when to cry before God when others are crying before men. They know when to sacrifice when others are withholding. They know when to stay when others are going. This ministry you see. Thank God for the results that you see and hear. But it's not luck. There is something about God you know. That your results can be predictable. There's no, ah, apostle be careful. What if tomorrow there's no result? Which God are you talking about now? Return back to your homes tonight with an appetite to know God. You can use some time this weekend or at least before we continue next week. There are other things to teach you. But please go back and sit down and ask yourself, 
Am I just a church goer? Am I just a prayer man? Am I just a Bible study Christian? Or do I know God? When challenges stand before me, what name of God do I know that I can call? When all my enemies surround me and it's obvious they are going to defeat me, what do I know about God that turns the hand of things? Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son. Giving your Spirit until the work on earth is done. Sing it one more time, I'm not done. in this generation for the sake of your purposes I ask oh God that you reveal yourself to us may we not stand before Pharaoh not knowing you may we stand before Pharaoh haven't met I am Lord our destinies are different and the various dimensions of destiny are different and so I ask you, oh God, in this season, that very specifically and personally, you begin to reveal yourself to everyone. A customized revelation that befits their assignments. In the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, by this revelation, take away fear. Take away impatience. Take away frustration take away a sense of shame and disappointment show us something about you that supplies the strength to continue in the name of Jesus every time I hear your voice it comes alive every time I hear your voice there's a joy in my heart in spite of all the sadness that surrounds me And the joy that's in my heart Only comes alive every time I hear your voice It comes, it comes alive every time I hear your voice Apostle, what should I do when I hear bad news? Lock yourself put on a song of worship don't mind the tears as they roll don't mind what you hear begin to celebrate what happens if the brother said he will not marry me again I know you are human but you are also spiritual whatever dimension you permit is what find expression what if I thought I would get the job and the job is not coming dance and celebrate the one who woke me up can give me a job who gave me strength to write the aptitude test although I failed he's still alive listen I'm not telling you what I don't do I have already danced all the miracles of this miracle service I've already rejoiced it I didn't just pray it I spent the night forcing your healing to arrive here I can guarantee you it arrived because both the parcel and the deliverer are not mysteries. We know them. <laughs> ah! May you lose the ability to wrinkle yourself to old age just because of this, this thing around. No, no. Choose to be joyful. Choose to be joyful. Lord, things
things are not like that yet. Tomorrow, by 9 o'clock, my landlord is coming. My landlord has already told me, you can go to church, but 9 o'clock is me that will wake you in the morning. Lord, what should I do? Even if you cry, he's still coming. So why don't you rejoice? Are we together? So I thought that my son, you know, would, 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 my son would, would get a very nice job. I thought he was working only to find out that he's been five years without a job. We are dying in this family. Apostle, I did not even eat. I came here hungry. Brothers and sisters, it's joy that will put food in that plate. Your anger is pushing that plate far from you. So bring it closer by rejoicing. a very big God who is always by my side a mighty God by my side just wasting our time. This is the foolishness that brought us thus far. Hallelujah. I don't like dancing. I don't know how to dance. The Bible said to whom much is given, much is given. Even if all I do is this way, God knows is a is my windows might have put on my hand. But hold on, hold on, hold on. Some of you, some of you, you know what you did after you took one bottle of beer when you were in the world. So we just have two minutes, Sam. In two minutes, I want us to share this place. Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes.
bless, bless you ourselves. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Let me have your attention. I just want to explain something. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Yes, yes. Take it easy. When it's time to shout, you shout. When it's time to listen, let's listen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. If we, if when it's time to shout, we shout together. But when it's time to listen, let's listen so that we can allow God to step in. Before you sit down, I just want to tell you something. Listen. You see, most times, most times, the difference between carnality and spirituality is not necessarily the action, it's the revelation. The same way someone can just shout and waste his time and just a show of youthfulness, another person can shout with revelation and that alone can be tequila. The shout that will bring down Jericho. Are we together? Now, I know that we just took two or three minutes singing and dancing and jumping before the Lord. I want you to know that God is not a man. Please have this revelation. Are we together? Some of you, you will sit down now and check and find out that certain situations have gone. Some of you, in that, in that, in that rejoicing, you will be amazed to know the release of angels and the ministry spirits going to correct situations in your life. You must believe this. Hallelujah. Please be seated for a minute. Let me just tie it up and we'll pray. My spirit is fired up. This praise did something to me. Joy. Joy. Brothers and sisters, learn this. Be ever joyful. Don't jump today and dance and rejoice. And five minutes later, after service, you are frowning and acting as though it's not God that you came to meet again. Make it a disposition. Not just an emotional thing that happened in the night. The third key, very quickly, that provokes restoration in the life of a man is sacrifice. Key number three, sacrifice. Let me tie it quickly so that we can pray. Sacrifice. First Kings 17 from verse 7. Or oh, really, verse, verse, verse 1, to, 1 to 6. First Kings 17. Read. Or if we do not have time, 17. And it came to pass after a while, he said that the brook dried up because there had not been rain. Read on. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, go down to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow to sustain you. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water. Number one, she's a widow. Number two, trying to gather sticks. Obviously, Elisha knew that it was a time of famine. Are we together now? It will look as though Elijah just came to help himself. But a woman is about to receive breakthrough. A woman is about to receive. Only God knows what happened. A widow meant that she lost her husband. And several other things would have left her life. And then, that I may drink. Verse 11. And as she was going to fetch it, he called her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but an handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. Hear what the prophet says. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said. Make that sacrifice. I know that it is not convenient for you, but I'm standing here representing God to step into your life and command restoration, breakthrough. But I'm demanding something from you. In this case, that which is valuable to you now. Make me cake first. Bring it unto me and afterwards you will make for you and your son. Listen. I wish, I wish that what I were saying 
will just happen without sacrifice. Restoration will cost you. You will have to provoke your faith. A seed is not just money. A seed is a sacrifice of something that costs you. It's a proof that you love God. Whenever what you have is about to finish, there is a system to refill it again. In this case, he demanded sacrifice of her. Listen, a sacrifice in the realm of the spirit automatically brings whoever is doing it into a covenant with God. Psalm 50 verse 5, it says, Gather unto me my saints, they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. This is why many believers never experience restoration. Why will you as a man of God come and meet a woman? Please, brothers and sisters, I want you to reason this. You look at someone who is about to dry, nothing is happening in her life, and then you are asking her to sacrifice something. Jesus was having a crusade. He was the organizer and the conveyor of the crusade. And then he said, go and feed the people, and there was nothing. And then... Andrew found a young lad. You would call it bullying. Our generation knows how to abuse words. You would even call it an abuse. Collected the boy's loaf and bread, his lunchbox, and took it to Jesus. And said, this is what we've been able to find. And Jesus said, fine. I thought Jesus was Abba, so, such a harsh and wicked adult. You mean you bully this? Go and return it back. I am love. But Jesus said, that's it. Have you always wondered who had the remaining 12 baskets? The boy was willing to sacrifice a moment of satisfaction to create something. Many believers do not know how to sacrifice now to smile. This is a principle that does not just go to seeds alone. Sacrificing the convenience, luxury today, so that you can carry an anointing and a grace that will be able to speak tomorrow. Sacrificing today to discipline yourself and learn the principles that will make you successful. You want to experience restoration and indeed it's a principle that applies to many mysteries in the spirit. Sacrifice. A few minutes ago you were shouting and now Koinonia is quiet. Why? Because it's a reflection of your unwillingness to part with things today and gain them tomorrow. If you want to be great, listen to me. If you want to defy the limitation that comes with this system, get used to this language. Sacrifice. You will always give up something to go up. You won't hold what you have and still rise. The lighter you are, the higher you fly. Are we together? Sacrifice. Praise can be a sacrifice. Your seed can be a sacrifice. Your service in the house of God can be a sacrifice. Your honor to the vessels of God can be a sacrifice. You want to experience restoration. Listen, let me teach you something powerful about restoration. The blessing is not in what you have lost. The blessing is in what you have left. There's a very strange story in the Bible. I think it's in the book of Hosea or Amos. That a shepherd was trying to rescue a lamb that had been eaten by a lion the lion so ate the lamb that there was nothing left only one ear and two legs that was all that was left yet the shepherd still ran to still rescue the lamb what will you do with one ear and two legs eating the intestines eating all of this but in the realm of the spirit it is not what left you that is the issue it is what you have left what you have left is a sign that god is still interested in restoration that's why everything did not go are you hearing what i'm saying most times we forget what we have left and we keep regretting oh god this one left me a relationship left you but your health is still with you that health can be the seed that will bring back another relationship 
your job left you but your praise did not leave you that praise can be a sacrifice that will bring another job are you getting the, the way this thing works there is always something you have in your life that can bring back something you lost there is always something you have in your life that can bring back something you lost. Listen, let me repeat myself. There is always something in your life that you have today that can bring back something you lost. Hallelujah. Yes. You had a miscarriage and you are crying and saying, Lord, this is the fourth miscarriage. You lost the baby, sad. But by the grace of God, you are still alive and you can speak. Use your health as a seed to get another child. The health that you have dedicated to praising God as a seed of sacrifice. Apostle, but I lost my father, he's gone. I lost my mother, she's gone. I lost my brother, he's gone. I understand and I sympathize with you deeply from the depth of my heart. But you are the seed that is left. Use yourself and your life to gain back what your father would have been and what your mother would have been. Everything they would have been to you. Sowing that seed of sacrifice. Someone can appear in your life and say, I may not be your biological father, but I take responsibility for your life from today. No strings attached. There is such a possibility. Are we together? Yes. They killed several children. The nation of Israel was under threat. And a woman carried her son as a seed and put him in a river and just said, Lord, just protect this guy. And God said, that son that you gave as a seed, I will use him as the deliverer to preserve them. Whenever you are afraid of losing things, you open the door for losses. That which I have feared most has come upon me. There are many of us, you are so afraid of losing things that you, you fear success when it comes because you think it will not last. Anytime good things happen, you are careful. A brother comes to propose to you and you are saying, well, I said yes, but the truth is I've not said yes first. I've had 10 people break my heart. That's what happened to the woman who met Jesus. Six husbands, five men shattered her heart. The sixth one is not even her husband and Jesus came. So she was careful. And Jesus said, me, I'm not like the rest though. And gave her an encounter. She became an evangelist instantly. Went and gathered people and said, come. What of the madman at Gadara? Do you know there was a time that man had his sense back? There was a time he was born. There was a day they dedicated him. There was a day the madness started. Gradually. Until he got to that acute state where even chains could no longer hold him. He was in a cave all by himself. So when they crossed over to the other side, demons came through him but Jesus had compassion. He was seeing a man who had potentials to be an evangelist to win 10 cities. Yet he was under that situation. And Jesus said, we can do something. Now, when you read your Bible, I don't want us to turn there. But even with those demons, the Bible says the man worshipped Jesus. The remaining 1% sense that I have, the demons are making me look like I don't recognize you. But that ounce of sanity, I sow it as a seed and I worship you. And Jesus said, all right. All of you people trying to mess up this guy's life, you can go places. But let this guy be restored. The Bible says they came and they found him in his perfect mind. He went to the Decapolis, 10 cities, gathered people and brought them to Jesus. The miracle is not in what you have left. I know that whilst you're sitting right now, there is a fibroid in your stomach. But can you use your mouth as the seed to take away that fibroid? Your stomach was affected, but you still have a voice. You can sing. You still have an ear. Your ear can be the seed, the sacrifice of attentiveness to listen to the word of the Lord can restore you. No man is ever helpless if you understand the mystery of seeds and sacrifices. Every time things leave you, forget about them. Focus on what you have left. Lord, I give you all your praise. I lost my job. 
lost my wife, lost my children. I'm all alone. And God says, that's all you need. You are alone with me like Jacob. Use your aloneness as a seed. Sow it and receive an encounter. An encounter that will bring them again. Job understood this. He lost everything in his life. The only thing he had was his conviction. And the wife said, lose that one too. So, why are you talking like one of these foolish women? How else will it come back? Job said, though he slay me, I have lost my health, but I have not lost my voice. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Elihu and all and co were talking all kinds of nonsense. Job came listening to them. And in chapter 42, Job said, well, I may not be able to give as I used to be, but I still have my mouth. I can be an intercessor. 42 verse 10, he started interceding for his friends. And God said, this is it. He turned his life around. And God turned the captivity of Job, 42 verse 10, when he prayed for his friends. Listen, there is always something in your life that can bring back something that left you. If this is the only revelation you have tonight, you will rejoice. Go back home and stop tear all of those sheets of papers that are archives of regrets and start writing what you have left. I still have my convictions. I lost a job, but I still have my certificate. Are we together now? I lost my car, but my hands are still working well. I didn't die in the accident. And when you put all those things, you say, Lord, I laid this at the altar of sacrifice. I tell you to bring back everything and everything. Sacrifice. Number four, very quickly. The fourth key to restoration is engaging the prophetic. The fourth key to restoration engaging the prophetic specifically prophetic utterances let me show you three scriptures that will bless you tonight Isaiah 42 verse 22 please give it to us media Isaiah 42 verse 22 but this is a people robbed and spoiled all of them are snared in holes and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey and non deliverance, for a spoil. And there is no advocate that prophesies to them, restore. For you to ever experience restoration, there must be the introduction of the prophetic into your life. The prophetic, the prophetic, either as an operation of the word of God or as a ministry of those anointed to walk in that respect. You have to understand what I'm teaching you. Without an encounter with a prophetic grace, a prophetic office, or a, a prophetic dimension of the word of God, there is no restoration. It's impossible. Second scripture, Psalm 119 verse 49. I found this scripture while I was studying and I felt it was very powerful and um, it would be great for us to see it. Psalm 119 verse 49. It says, Remember the word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. Give us an Amplified. I want to explain to you what this scripture said. Remember fervently the word and promise to your servant in which you caused me to hope. In other words, the man of God came and told you he has a covenant with God and said God made a promise to him that when he stands and does certain things, he will hear him. And you are now saying, Lord, remember when that man of God spoke to me that something about his altar and his covenant can bring me break to I believed it. And he said, remember the word, the promise you gave your servant upon which I now hope that it will work for me. That's why sometimes you hear people say the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the God of Oyedipo. So there is, it's not some religious, you know, whatever it is. It is a system of invoking the personal covenant. God, aside from the Old and the New Testament, God has personal covenants with men till today. God can enter a covenant with a man, a family, because of something that was done and say, look, whoever does certain things connected to this, I will bless you. 
God had a covenant with Abraham. Listen. And anybody and anything that came out of Abraham. A sad story later happened. And then Ishmael came out. When Ishmael came out, the Bible says Hagar, Hagar and Ishmael were in the wilderness. Two of them were crying. Only the voice of Ishmael was heard in heaven. Why? The Bible says God heard the voice of the young lad. A child is crying. The mother is crying. Only one voice is heard in heaven. Because God said, Abraham, you and anybody and anything that comes out of you. It's not God's concern whether it was a mystic or not. He is bound to it. It is still the reason why Ishmael today can still manifest certain dimensions of the blessing. Remember. The last scripture. Second Kings. Let's look at chapter 7. Actually, the whole is, is Elisha's encounter in Samaria, chapter 6, 7. But we're looking at chapter 7, just two scriptures. Second Kings, chapter 7, we'll read verse 1 and then we'll read verse 18. And Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. This is the prophetic now. Samaria as a nation was ravaged by so much famine that the Bible says women were eating their children. Mothers, please think for a minute. Think of roasting the leg of your child and watching it roast and yet not being afraid. I've heard of people drinking their urine because of test, but I've not heard of people eating their children. So Nigeria's recession is not as bad as it was here. The Bible says women, as compassionate as they were, were eating the same children. Eating your child is like eating yourself. The child came out of you. It's the same thing as cutting yourself and eating it. And this is what happened. And the prophet came and said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Listen. He said tomorrow. About this time. Shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel. And two measures of barley for a shekel. In the gate of Samaria. Look at me. Let me teach you something profound. The miracle. This tomorrow. Was not something God revealed to the prophet. And said that's what I want to do. The, uh, the prophet chose the date. When that land will be delivered. Listen. This is not revelation. It didn't say God revealed to me. In other words, I'm just giving you a superior information. There is a difference between revelation and creation. Revelation just gives you a prior knowledge of what is there anyway. Creation makes it appear and manifest. Like the testimony of our dear lady who goes to her room and sees piles of money, physical cash. Now that's creation. Revelation is I can stand here and say there is a brown envelope in your room. Go and check it. I didn't put it there. I only help to guide you so you go and find it. This prophet was not creating. This prophet, I mean he was not revealing. He was creating. He says, look, I understand that part of the privileges of prophetic ministry is to appoint to people dates. The realm of the spirit has events without dates tied to them. It takes the prophetic to appoint dates. That's why through the prophetic ministry, you can go into five years ago, pick an event that would have been your testimony that was corrupted through witchcraft and fast forward it and appoint a date in your future to make it happen. You have to believe this. Otherwise, how does God restore years? Are we together now? Time is only subject to this realm. The realm of the spirit is a compendium of happenings that are manipulated by the will of God and the intelligence of citizens on the earth who know how to make it happen. So there are events that represent the will of God. There are certain dimensions of his will that are fixed according to his predeterminate counsel. But there are others that are flexible left to the intelligence of the saints. Such as your miracle today. It's not God that decided that today will be your miracle. You would have chosen to remain at home. 
Jesus was passing a city called Nain. Are we Bible students? It was never his plan to raise any dead body. He was minding his business. He was not on evangelism. And he saw people crying. And then he said, what's going on here? And they said, there is a woman ravaged by witchcraft. Her husband that dead. Her only son dead. And Jesus said, wait a minute. Bring down that coffee. There and then, he decided the destiny of that woman. Brothers and sisters, hear me. This issue of one day, one day is faithlessness. You can insist. The Bible says today, if you hear his voice, you can choose and say, Lord, today, today, I'm tired of this hangover of nonsense around my life. Today is the day your faith can turn it around and bring you a miracle. You believe that? Say amen. Listen. You are the only one who continues to progress in time. The realm of the spirit does not progress in time. The time is bare. Are we together now? So in the realm of the spirit, you don't, there's no such thing as past and present with God. So when you say God, remember five years ago, you said you would do something and you did not do it. God said it doesn't make any difference. It can still happen. And you say, Lord, but I'm older now. God says, and so I can readjust it to still fit the older you. Lord, you gave me a word that I will marry at 21. I'm 35. And God says, no problem, I can do it. Lord, I plan to have six children. God says, it doesn't make any difference. Six years, two, two years with twins. My word has come to pass. Lord, you said you would prosper me, but this has not happened. I would have gotten a job. How much was the salary that time? 20,000. How much would you have had now? 1.2. God says, I give you an idea that brings you 2.4 in one month. Listen, please, you have to believe what I'm telling you. Otherwise, we're wasting our time here. The prophetic is powerful. It can appoint dates for spiritual events and cause them to be made manifest. You've seen this happening in Koinonia. Somebody will write jam, for instance, and have 160 something. And all of a sudden, a word will come and you go and check it again and see 260 something. How do you explain that? Someone writes an exam and just remembers writing his name alone or question one. And then comes and a word comes and result comes out and is in 4.8. Oh, please, brothers and sisters, we are intelligent people, but we are also spiritual. Never allow your intelligence take away the place of the realm of the spirit in your life. The same way you are seated here and say, Apostle, can God do it? Brothers and sisters, he can. Look at my life. Look at this ministry. The word of God. Can God cure that sickness? Yes, he can. I repeat, yes, he can. Can God turn around my captivity? Some of you are not sick. But what is wrong with you is better sickness than that problem. God can still turn it around. God can turn it around. In the name of Jesus, God can turn it around. The Lord declared and said, I shall announce to us that this miracle service is dedicated towards restoration. I truly believe every word of God. And I believe that one of the things God is going to be doing tonight is to call back things. Compress time for people. Call back things. Please believe it. Believe it. Believe it. I am a testimony. I've seen God bless people overnight. Overnight. Ha! He said, rejoice not over me, my enemies. Sometimes life can whip you to a point where you look up and say, God, I have served you. I didn't kill anybody. I didn't rob anybody. Why is my life like this? Then God tells you, locate the power of prophecy. Locate the power of prophecy. Some of you didn't want to come tonight. You can come and still look and say, wow, what an interesting service. Or you can come and pray. say, Lord, it is within your power to change this situation. Why should we pro prolong it? It's within your power. It's within your power. You've seen the testimonies. We never announce anything here that is not verified. You've seen all the great testimonies. 
no matter what is wrong with your life your ministry has crashed down you were once on fire and once anointed and something happened you can't tell what it is but that grace and that unction doesn't look like it's there again you are preaching and even you you know you are not blessing anybody again like the hair of samson it can come back again my help my help My mother has died. I'm an orphan. There's no one to take care of me. Listen, let me tell you the truth. There are many fathers and mothers. Prophecy just needs to bring two of you together. Tonight, if you believe what I'm teaching you, you will be amazed to see the way the Lord will turn your life. pregnant now I'm seated here and my baby cannot even move he's there just give me a few minutes and watch a miracle that will bring tears from your eyes I believe God I am one man of God that believes God can turn around any situation he will always be alive the Lord will perfect that concerning jobs are finished. A job is not with any government. A job is in the word of God. Listen to me. Don't cry. No. Stop that tears. It's a weak knot. When the book is open, tears will stop. God didn't gather you here. Some of you travel so far. There are some of you standing in the, in the rain, standing outside. God is too faithful to come and waste your time. In the next few minutes, I want you to believe this. Please listen, listen. Don't be part of those. Now is not the time to pinch around and hope. Will God do it? Apostle, I lost money. Apostle, I lost joy. Apostle, I lost a job. They blackmailed me. able to restore and let me tell you something God can restore fast he can restore fast 430 years in captivity one night God said that's all when God arises El Gibor the mighty man when he shakes himself and stands up and says I want to leave David down let me tell you I don't care what which way I have seen God lift people who were not even prepared I just, he just chose that I want to make a specimen with this person it doesn't take time it doesn't take time we're about to pray I came here with all my heart, believing that God will restore somebody. If you belong to any of these categories, except you've not lost anything, you can sit down. But if you know there is something in your life that you know must come back, I'm not saying may come back, it's not a discussion. I've lost my joy, can't come back. I've lost my peace, can't come back. I lost my husband. God can fetch him wherever he is and return him. Hallelujah. Listen, we're going to pray for a few minutes. It will be very fast. I don't plan to waste our time here. We're going to be very fast. The message is already complicated. It's not when I start ministry. As soon as we start praying, I like you, please. If you have never believed a man of God in your life, why don't you do this? Just, just be childlike for once and say, Lord, I believe the word of your servant. I open up my heart. I want you to open your mind.
mount and call things back into your life. Call opportunities. This atmosphere is anointed. Call. Is still in the
the spirit. And the Lord is telling me people will wear them now. This is a sign of restoration too. Lord, where are they? Let it happen now. There is a grace for performance. Grace for performance. Please bring them out quickly. Please, ushers, you should know this. We are saving time. Please, quickly. He says, grace for performance right now. In the name of Jesus.
heart to relieve itself in your presence. You think about your failure of primary school. Now you are a graduate, but it has still sponsored your lack of confidence. In the name that is above all, it's one more time I pray. Anyone here still connected to his past, I come in the name of Jesus, the one whom I serve. I provoke an anointing from heaven. Some of you represent your families. Right now, in the name of 
Jesus, may that fire come upon you now and bring you breakthrough. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Nothing is working. I cause it. I cause the spirit. I cause the power. I cause the influence. section inside and outside prophecy is powerful when it's done with understanding it can wipe your tears in one minute lift your hands you are laid up i'm going to pray for you oh is it augustus yes augustus or august something that has been augustus augustus or something augustus i'm hearing like Augustus, please. We have to finish fast because we have to pray for this. Augustus, change the story. Jesus, something just left you. You are sick. That sickness has gone now. In the name of Jesus. Look at me, my brother. You don't make it in life by hustling. You make it in life by divine direction. This is what God is saying. What's your name? Just 
bring them, but the name I hear is Augustus. But I will bring for you something Augustus. My brother, hold my hands. This is not about hustling. Huh? It's not moving around. It's walking circumspectly by the Spirit and the grant you grace. Hold my hands. The Lord will wipe your tears in the name of Jesus and bring this oppression to an end. That man holding pictures, run, come. Your breakthrough has come. Run, run, come. Stand here, where are you coming from? I'm looking at you. You are not in Zaria. From Kano State. You are from Kano State. Who is this? No, no, I'm not. I'm looking at your picture. My mom. What's wrong with her? Nothing is wrong with her. She gave me something for you. Your mom is sick. You don't know something is wrong with her. Hold on, please. If they are manifesting, just leave them there. Please, let's be fast. I want to pray for you. One. She's my sister too. This is your sister. Yes. If I don't pray, I'm seeing this girl inside the coffee. Where is she? She's in Canada. Is she well? Yes. She's well. Yes. We have to pray for her. One of your sisters is sick. Yes. Sir. Is that true? Yes, Where sir. is she? She's in Canada. She's in Canada. The same thing happening to that one is about to happen to this one. Do I know you? That's what I'm telling you. God wants to change this thing now. Yes. You are a sincere person. Now, what do you do? I'm a banker. Sir. You are a banker. I will pray for you. So that they will not cause trouble and steal money and you in your group. There's already trouble. Yes. Is yes, that sir. true? Yes, sir. In your office. Yes, sir. And if I don't pray for you, they are going to sack you by August. I want to pray for you. Correct, sir. August. Yeah. That's what stand up. That's what they're correct, sir. Hold it. If I don't pray for you by August, you are leaving at once. But there is a God. There is a God in heaven. There is a God in heaven. Come, sir. I don't know you, and I don't know how your mother got to know me, but your mother loves me with all her heart. Is that true? Yes, sir. I want you to tell your mother that her son is blessing her from his heart. You hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. yes. I'll pray for you, sir. Huh? Because people have to be careful. There is a group, this bank group. All of you have problems. They are going to make you to pay some amount of money that is missing. And they are going to drive all of you. You need the mercy of God. Huh? Yes, and for your sister, this is witchcraft. God is coming in to step in. You are a very nice person to come in. In the name of Jesus. The same thing God is delivering you for is what is delivering the person shouting here. Let it turn now. I lay my hands upon you. Ugechuku. Is it Ugechuku or Ugechuku or something? In the name of Jesus, I speak favor. Sir, look at me. As I laid my hands on you, I saw you climbing a ladder. Watch this. This is how you will stand here in Koinonia to testify. Listen. I want everybody to look at this brother very well. Know his face. Because he's going to come and stand here and testify of a dramatic breakthrough that God is bringing to his life. Is it Ugochuku or Ugochuku? Which of you came from Southern Canada? You come and stand. Your miracle has come. Jesus. Stand up, sir. What do you do? Watch with the MC, Kefi. Federal Medical Center. Yes, Kefi. I want to pray for you. If God were to do one thing for you, what will it be? You're a wise man. I want to pray for you. God is going to lift you. Do you know that the hand of God is upon your life? Not just for like hand of God, even to tell people about Jesus Christ. There is an evangelistic grace on yes. your life. Yes. God has revealed it to you. Yes. You know it. I've been doing that. I was together in your program uh, in soup. Two days program you came at KF. Oh, I you were there the, at yes, the meeting. Two, four, seven, you were part of the committee people yeah, there. Yeah. Because I see a man that God will use greatly in outreaches. I'm seeing signs and wonders. God will use you greatly. So I want to pray for you. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let an anointing, something will come upon you now. I tell you, you will rise up from this night and begin to walk miracles like you held the champ. Receive that place right now. In the name of Jesus, the same thing is happening to that person. I release 
that grace, I activate your spirit, man, by the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come. There is a spirit troubling this brother. Stand up. Come. Lift your hands. Let him go now. Out. In the name of Jesus Christ. He came to receive impartation. What you need is deliverance first. There is a, a spirit that is oppressing you. Mama, can I talk to you, ma? Please. Where are you coming from, madam? Abuja. You believe that God is going to change your story. In the name of Jesus, you will. I want to pray for you. Please hold my hand because the Lord said, I should bless you. The Lord said, I should bless you. There is, I'm seeing, I'm seeing one. Kai. The Lord is showing me the vision of a lady. I'm looking at this table and I'm seeing, I'm not seeing a table. I'm seeing a lady. You are wearing like blue, a blue cloth with her tie. You are crying now, cleaning your tears. And you are asking the Lord that I will locate you. You are inside here. No, you are wearing blue. No. No. I will pray for you. The person is coming. You want something. Who is that? You tied your head with. Madam, run and come. You are the one I'm talking about. I will pray for you. Look at me. Where were you sitting? Where, was she inside here? Yes, sir. Where, is, where are you coming from? Kemi State. I'm going to pray for you. He said, I should tell you that he's bringing captivity to an end in your life this night. Captivity to an end. You believe it? Let it be yours now. The power of the Holy Spirit. My sister, look at me. Shame and reproach. I'm looking at you, but I'm seeing the face of an old woman. Hold my hands. Let shame and reproach leave you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ.
Let me just talk to you one minute. Ah, these children look small here, but I'm seeing. Hold on, hold on. They are here. One is who is this one? These ones are your children. I'm looking at this one. Is she married? She is married. Because I'm seeing a ring. And I'm seeing a ring, but I'm not hearing the sound of a child. And the Lord is saying a child should come now. Two years. Two years. Two years. Where is the person? Come. No woman. There's no woman. Call the person's name now. Huh? No children. Two years. No children. We are going to pray. She's not here. This is your son. This is the one here in the Okay, meeting. you standing for them. Mama, why should you give birth to children and not see your grandchildren? Somebody shout, no way. Shout it again, no way. The Bible says you will see your children's children. That's scriptures. It didn't say you will see them on your deathbed. You will see them and dance and rejoice with them. Mama, do you believe if I pray for this lady now? She will come back and testify here with a child. I believe in Jesus' name. It will happen. You Jesus. believe. What's her name? Her name is Adama Isa. Adama. Adama. Jesus. The name of Jesus become pregnant. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This one. Yeah, the medium. This is the one. No, no, I'll pray for him. This one is again. Winter. Sometimes, diabetes, Hold on. Ulcer. I will pray for you. you have fibroid, yes, you have diabetes, yes. you have ulcer. Yes, sir. What does this look like? You see how the devil is fibroid, diabetes, ulcer. A woman like this, then her own children, barrenness. Then this one, there's no speed in your life. Come and stand here. You are you that you are the gentleman, there's serious retrogression. I have to pray for you. Huh? You love God, but you are not moving forward at all. I have to pray for you. Is that true, Mama? Okay. Okay. Repeating, repeating. That's what I'm saying. It's not moving forward. Yes, sir. You believe in the message I just preached that God is a restaurant. I believe. My Jesus. Mother, it's not that you are lazy. There is a spirit that manipulates your results. You are being repeating forever. I have to pray for you. Lift your hands. You are the one I will start with first. Father, let it end now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands on your mind and I command by the power of the Holy Spirit. Over. Mama, that's it. It's over in the name of Jesus. I pray for this, your children. Pray for this. Where is he? Our husband yes. is we were from Plateau State. We live in Kano. Mumta Nebokos. Okay. In Aike, she made it. Yeah, we have to pray for him. Because I'm seeing a serious spirit of delay in his life. We have to pray for him. And I'm seeing he's having problem already with his wife. This is something we need to pray for. Um, I hope you are not embarrassed. No, no, sir. In the name of Jesus, we pray for you. Mama, let me pray for you. All sad that diabetes, fibroid, and um, and and ulcer. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command every single one of them, help her, let it go now. The same way it came, let it go. Every house has an entry and exit. Let this be the exit of this now. In the name of Jesus Christ. A lady is going to shout now under the anointing. God is removing fiber from someone's stomach. Now, this is what I'm seeing in the spirit. We are going to pray for the sick now very quickly. In the name of Jesus Christ. Someone, I'm seeing this. I command it now. I command it now to happen. Those malignant groups, I command it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the power Spirit, a loud shout is going to be someone with that loud shout. That's the end of it. It comes now, never to be told. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands before we pray for the sick. I want to challenge every strange spirit that is responsible for sabotaging the purposes of God in your life. Lift your hands. As I minister deliverance to you, it doesn't mean you are possessed. No, no. The operations of demons is such that they can take advantage of mechanisms, provisions in the realm of the spirit to manipulate people. I want to pray for you. I have to do this before we start praying for the sick. Inside, outside, I want you to be ready. Lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Father, 
to 11 now as I'm praying the power of God is going to come upon that child and the child will start manifesting I'm seeing this is this is some demonic diabolic thing I'm not saying the child is bad I'm just showing you what the Lord is showing me father wherever this child is I pray for our children now whether it is an initiation whether it is anything occultic um, I decree and declare right now by the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ wherever that little child is I command those devils to live now. Yeah. I command those devils to live now. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. I command those devils to live now. Yeah. Very quickly we are going to pray for the sick. There are so many things God is doing. In the realm of the spirit. There are so many things God is doing. There is a brother. The power of God is going to come on him now. Overflow to the one at the road. Please, I want you to bring him now. I want to talk to him. Overflow 2. I see an angel of the Lord moving across Overflow 2. And the fire of God is falling on a brother. Please, 
I want that brother to come. The fire of God will suddenly fall upon that person. Please let him come. Carry him and, and bring him. I want to prophesy to him. I'm going to give us a prayer point. Now while we are praying, we are going to ask people to come so that we'll pray for the sick very, very quickly because I want to be able to have time to prophesy. Remember I spoke about restoration. I want to use time to prophesy. Now watch this please. Overflow one, all the overflows. Those who are sick in body, I want you to, when, when we finish praying, make your way to your various overflows and wait there. There will be people who will come to minister healing to you. We believe in the ministry of miracles. God has anointed us for this purpose. And by God's grace, we are not too many that we cannot lay hands on people one by one. And that's why we do that. So that everybody will have that sense of, I may not be able to lay hands on people outside, but there are men and, and women of God anointed and they will be able to also minister to you. Praise the Lord. Please make sure you are sensitive outside. I want to pray for that gentleman. That's him. Ah. Let it end now. I stretch my hands towards you. I bring it to an end. There is sorrow upon sorrow on this gentleman's life. The Lord is asking me to wave my hands. It comes to an end now. This guy is not the person. No. Just, just leave him there. At least he has received his own. Who is this one? From outside, overflow two. The person is supposed to be shouting. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let this end. I'm stretching my hands. In the name of Jesus, I command the power of darkness over your life and over your family to be broken right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I breathe the life of God into you and I decree and declare that it comes to an end now. I know there are many people here. There is a gentleman. Please, I don't do these things to disgrace people. But there is a gentleman here. Um, you are thoroughly addicted to taking. You know, you always hear me say that thing. What's the name of that thing? That codeine. But your own is not just codeine alone. It's plus. Whether smoke, um, some of these funny things, you are here and you are tired of it, but you cannot stop. Please, where are you? Please don't waste our time. There's a gentleman that I need to pray for. Seems to me like that person is outside, inside. Please, if you are here, don't be embarrassed. I want to help you end this. I know there are many people, but there is a specific person God is talking to me about. Let's just flow as the Holy Spirit to smoke him, please. That gentleman, I want you to come out here and I want to lay my hands and end it. You are tired of it, but you can't stop. No matter what you do, that's what you spend your little money on. And this thing is crashing your life and destroying your destiny. Where are you? Let's appreciate him. Hallelujah. Listen, look at me. Jesus said, he who does not have sin should cast the first stone. When we call people like this, we don't condemn people. I love you with all my heart. The meaning of my name is the way to love. I love people. You look at these gentlemen, you can see the way their lives are. You see how disorganized they are. This is the devil. If we don't pray for these people, this gentleman one day will become a father. It doesn't matter. I prophesy for one is for all. Come and join them. I want to pray for you now. Please, one minute. If you are if you are still thinking about it, just remain there. But you are saying, man of God, I'm tired of this thing. You have to help me. Quickly join them. God gave a word for one, but I'm praying because we have to pray for the sick quickly. Some of you, nobody led you into it. It's a spirit that just pushed you into this thing. You love God, but this thing is killing you. I salute your courage. I don't know if I would have had the courage to come out. I salute your courage. Come. Let, I think we should honor them. Come on, Koinonia.
apostle does it matter of course it does of course it does of course it does when i start praying please don't come out again if you are still coming i want you to rush and come male or female i don't care whether you are a male or female it doesn't matter I, I, I perceive that there are even ladies, male or female. Jesus is setting us free. So there's nothing to be embarrassed about. It. Please come and stand quickly. Male or female, Koinonia, celebrate them. They are still coming. Let's give them one more minute. Since God is already talking to them now, let's just take advantage of the anointing here. Apostle, I don't take it all the time. Still join them. You take it. The most important thing is that you take it. Even if it's not all the time, you take it. Join them and let God help you. Look at me, brothers and sisters. I'm your friend. I love you with all my heart. Like I said, you may look at these boys. Please, let me give a disclaimer. Hold on, Mike. Be careful when you look at people's children and just point and think they are bad. These people need help. I interact with these people all the time and they will tell you they don't like it. It's a spirit. Some of them, nobody took, got them into all of these things just by themselves. Some of them had dreams. Some of them had strange encounters. But my Bible says, God bless you. Don't be ashamed. Come and join. Please give them room. Honestly, let's, let's let this happen. Let's let this happen. Let's let this happen. If you are joining, come. The Bible says... For this purpose, for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy that this, this, you see, this smoking and drinking thing is a terrible thing. You carry cough syrup, snuff it till you are almost dying, pass out and come back again and still do it. And then others sell that, that leaf that they tie. You collect it, smoke it, and all of that. Look at me. I want to pray for you. And I want to pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Your coming out here does not make me better than you in any way. Are we together now? We are only, we are only benefactors of the grace and the mercy of God. I'm agreeing with you. Most people complain. Most people gossip about you. I'm not gossiping about you. I want to help you. Koinonia as a family loves you. Now listen, let me challenge all of you, please. After this prayer, huh, all of you are automatically members of prayer department for the next one month. You are welcome to prayer department for the next one month. Praise God. So, this is how we do it here. I won't deceive you that once I just pray for you, you go back and meet those friends. They will laugh at you and laugh at me and say forget about them. And then before you know it, you will go back into those things. One of the laws of, of influence is atmosphere. You open yourself to an atmosphere and destroy you. So after I pray for you, um, ushers, what will happen is you can get their names and their details. We we'll forward it to the um, prayer department and then we'll keep following up with you from there. You need to keep praying. You need to keep building your spirit. You need to be taught the word of God. And by God's grace, we're helping you. Some of you here will be doing what I'm doing some years to come. You will hold this mic in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you here, the ladies, you may be the wives of great men of God, evangelists and apostles. There is nobody, there's no such thing as hopelessness. To him that is joined to the living, there is hope. Stretch your hands, saints of God. If you are a mother here, stretch both of your hands. If you are a father here, stretch both of your hands. And say, use them as a point of contact. Whether your children are small or, or not, use them as a point of contact. We pray for you. We are praying for you now. That the power that is responsible for this living will end. I make contact with you. Christ. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me 
find somebody outside. I may not ask you to come. You stole a phone on Thursday, still with you. Go and return it after this service. Go and return that phone. You love God, but stealing a phone to sell it and causing trouble for somebody is not the way it happens. God can help you and God can bless you. In the name of Jesus, I set you free. If I have not touched you, just let me know and I will lay my hands on you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon you. I command that spirit to leave you. I command that devil to leave you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that devil to leave you. I curse. Oh, you are standing in for your brother. Where is he? What a wonderful lady. In the name of Jesus, I use you as a point of contact. As it's happening to you, let it happen to you. And hold on, don't go. Ah, okay, you are directing them. Okay. We decree and declare. Have I prayed for you, gentlemen? In the name of Jesus, all of you are my friends. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we break this addiction from your lives. Join me and say amen. I pray for any association that will not let you serve God. I command those associations from today. Let there be a dissociation between you and them. Jesus. God bless you. Let's appreciate them very quickly. Now, we are going to begin to pray. Have I prayed for them? Have I prayed for you? This guy, you are going to be a man of God. This brother, this gentleman, bring him. This young man is going to be a man of God. Hold my hands. You need guidance and mentorship. There is a call of God upon your life. Huh? That we we and whatever it is that is stealing the call, we cause it now. Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, self time in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that every challenge in my life must come under the authority of Jesus tonight. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Those who are seeking body, I want you to come right now. Those who are seeking body, overflow one, two, three, inside. us to bring the healing power of God to people and we're very happy. We'll continue to do it. Some of you are standing for your loved ones. God has made this place a, a solution center and we honor him for it. Now, please look up. We're going to do two things very quickly. Um, overflow one, you can go to your projector stand. Overflow two, your projector stand. Overflow three and every other one four, just join them somewhere there. Someone will come to pray for you now. Praise the Lord. While they are doing this, how many of us came with our prayer request? Hallelujah. Now, what I want you to do very quickly, those online, you can post it online and uh, we're going to connect with it by faith. If you have not written your prayer request or you've not written for your loved ones, do it quickly. The ushers are going to be waving the a basket. Please, let's do it orderly. Just wave your prayer request and they'll locate you. You'll drop it there and we'll bring it to the altar while we pray. Very quickly. Praise the Lord. Pastor Ejimi will be outside, overflow one. Pastor Ejimi and Pastor Femi, overflow one. He's going to be praying, Pastor Alpha. You'll go to overflow two, um, together with Mike. Mike, you follow him, overflow two. Overflow three, Benga, and Promise. Two of you will be at overflow two and uh, overflow three and any other overflow there. Praise the Lord. We'll do it that way. Father, together we release a corporate anointing for miracles, signs, and wonders. We decree and declare right now that as we begin to minister to God's people, do a quick walk. Let incurable situations go. Let cancers go. Let HIV go. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Anoint everyone, oh God, that you are going to be using to lay hands on these people and let there be dramatic testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, God bless you. Please, let's go very quickly. We have, let's try to see how we can cover this in 15, 20 minutes. Are we together now? God bless you. Lord, thank you for healings. Thank you for miracles. Worship team, you will help us. Bless us in Jesus' name. Please accept, listen, please accept the people laying hands on you, ask you. You don't need to tell them what is wrong with you. Just stand by faith. Praise God. The prophetic is at work. If there is need to prophesy or talk to you, just receive by faith. It doesn't mean we have to touch the area. Just believe by faith. You go and check yourself or call your loved ones. faith. Hallelujah. This is not a ritual that we do. This is a revelation that God gave and an instruction that every miracle service we receive the requests of God's people. No matter how we try to reach everyone we are constrained by time and um, so we are presenting it to the Lord. These are the things that attempt to say Jesus did not die. These are the things that attempt to say the work of the cross was and is a lie. So we bring them before him and we say, Lord, these are the obstacles that stop the revelation of your victory from being established in our lives. And we trust this fire to descend upon them. Stretch your hands by faith. Stretch your hands by faith. Believe it. Believe it. I want you to pray and say the request I'm dropping here is the last one. The last time I will be dropping this request. Please pray. There will we still have more, please. Those online, this is the time you connect with us. Those outside, you can stretch your hand to your, your projectors. God is doing miracles now. Christ. Heavenly Father, I pray. There are 
those online their requests we connect by faith and I prophesy that the same fire in this place will visit your requests in the name of Jesus those who have been assigned unto death by reason of this prayer they are delivered from death those who have been assigned unto failure by reason of this prayer they are declared a success age-long captivities you declared unto us in this miracle service that you are bringing restoration I prophesy that anointing upon this request restore oh God restore oh God restore oh God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ let there be strange restorations right now in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen I want to pray for you this is the last segment I want us to connect our time is gone we'll do this very quickly please lift your hands as I pray for you Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, I decree and declare right now every dry bone, every dry situation, every hopeless situation in your life, receive life right now in the name of Jesus. Receive life right now in the name of Jesus. Receive life right now in the name of Jesus. Everything called dead in your life, dead finances dead relationships dead career lives in the name of Jesus hear the word of restoration I prophesy let it come back to life now I prophesy come back to life now come back to life now come back to life now every issue that has been a lingering issue for a long time and has refused to leave your destiny in the mighty name of Jesus let tonight be the last night you will see it let tonight be the last night you will see it he said these Egyptians that you see today you will see them no more forever I command that you see them no more forever in the name of Jesus Christ that is supposed to have opened up to you and we don't know why it has refused to open till now in the name of Jesus at this June miracle service I swing those doors open for you I swing those doors open for you I swing those doors open for you for those who are asking God for direction for the next level beginning from tonight receive encounters that give you direction those outside, make sure you are connecting. Receive encounters that give you direction. In the name of Jesus Christ. I speak over your life. Every gift that is not yet speaking. Every grace that is, is still dormant within you. Whether spiritual gift or physical gift, I decree and declare right now. I command an awakening right now. I command a resurrection right now. I command an awakening right now. I command an awakening right now. Hear me. Every creative ability locked up on anyone here that has not found expression, I decree and declare life to your gift, life to your ability in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. There are many people here you are not working in spiritual gifts, 
Paul said, I long to see you that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that you may be established. I stretch my hands to you out of the abundance of help and God's grace and mercy. Something is coming upon you now. I decree and declare all nine gifts of the Spirit revealed in Scripture alongside others that have not been recorded at the count of three. Oh God, according to the faith of your people, let there be a distribution right now. One, two, three. Take it right now. 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 Step into those gifts. I release it upon you. I open up your spirit. I open up your understanding to be fruitful towards this gift in the name of Jesus. I declare upon you the mantle of favor that has made the difference in the life of ordinary people. Granting them access to platforms, access to people, access to resources. Right now, in the name of Jesus, receive that mantle right now. Take that anointing of supernatural favor. I impart it upon your life. I impart it upon your life. Hallelujah. I pray for you right now. Everything that represents dishonor in your life. The Bible says, where thou hast been deserted, so that no man passes through you, you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. I speak over your life. The kind of honor that lifts you and distinguishes you above your contemporaries. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Every dying ministry here, come back to life now. Every dying business, help them, help them please. Every dying business here, come back to life now. In the name of Jesus, every dying destiny here, I command you, come back to life in the name of Jesus. Every dying career, destroyed your prayer life so that your the fervency of your prayer life has gone down in the name of Jesus I found those calls to come back alive I found those calls of your prayer life to come back alive in the name of Jesus I pray for the spirit of revelation like never before access to the mysteries of the kingdom access to the operation of the world receive it right now receive it right now receive it right now i impart upon you the gift of faith let it be yours now in the name of jesus i impart upon you the gift of faith capacity to do impossible things receive that grace in the name of jesus I decree and declare one by one beginning from tonight the same way Noah opened the door of the ark and the animals started coming by themselves I command everything that should be in your life and has left you the same anointing that drew the animals one by one to the ark I command you to draw your blessings to your life now I command you to throw your blessings to your life now. Listen, Noah did not go to look for the animals. He just opened the door. The same way you have opened the door of your destiny, I command, I'm saying it again. I want you to believe me. It doesn't take time. It only takes the right word into your life. I decree and declare again between now and the next month's miracle service let there be strange testimonies of restoration strange testimonies of restoration whatever has not been working in your life right now whether it's your academics your marriage whatever it is i force it to work now Anything called barrenness in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, shall
Shabata Tatakata, Shepros Kedali Kai, Rekotos Koto Sheketeva, Frente Seke help them, Shopres Katabara Katashia, Reketoso Dos Kapata, whether they are here or connected by faith, I command anyone called Barry, become a joyful mother of children. Become a joyful mother of children. I pray for your finances. Whatever makes this thing hard for you, I curse that spirit now in Jesus' name. I decree and declare illumination, grace to know what to do, and grace to succeed at whatever you do. Receive it in the name of Jesus. For those who are students, whether on campus, the university, or any other campus, I declare, most of you are on break now, you are about to resume. As you resume, in the name of Jesus, I put life to your academics. I command missing scripts to be found. I command wrongly calculated results to be corrected. In the name of Jesus, as you prepare to write your exams, I prophesy like rain from four points upwards. I prophesy like rain. Hear what I'm saying. I prophesy like rain from four points upwards. In the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone here trusting God for a job? In the name of Jesus. Between now and the next 30 days, may the God of heaven arise and give you a job that will bring tears to your eyes. Finally, I pray for you in the name of Jesus that if you have never stood here to testify, listen to what I'm saying. If you have never stood here to testify in the name of Jesus, I stand in partnership with Jesus, the firstborn of the begotten, and I command that God will give you a testimony that will be too big for you to remain on your seat. A testimony that will be too great for you to remain on your seat. A testimony too big to remain on your seat. I decree and declare the spirit of death. There is a strange manifestation of the spirit of death. It always comes like a circle, looms over territory and takes the life of people. I declare, let the seal of the blood the mystery of exemption be upon you and your family. In the name of Jesus, let the seal of the blood, the mystery of exemption be upon you and your family. I cause accidents. I cause any kind of tragedy from coming to any family. In the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, I pray for you. I command in a way like never before, the helpers of your destiny. I speak over your life, the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. Even if they came before, I call them again. Thank you for lifting. gone but I cannot let us go without giving an opportunity please everyone stand any of you please. let's honor this altar call quickly help, help those under the anointing there are people here standing and saying man of God I want to make it right with Jesus some of you gave your hearts to him but for some reason things began to go haywire and you're saying, man of God, I want to return back. Some of you are yet to make this decision. Please listen to me inside and outside. Wherever you are, you are saying, man of God, if you will pray for me, I'm ready to surrender my heart to Jesus. I'm ready to start afresh or start anew. Wherever you are, I want to count five. Please, if you are coming, I want you to run. Clear the way for them. Our time is up and we have to be very, very fast. There are so many other things to do. Wherever you are, as we begin to clap for you, I count five, you should be here. 
please run like there's fire on the mountain one those coming from outside please protocol help them clear the way for them so that they come quickly quickly two koinonia appreciate them as they come run to jesus christ overflow one two three four everywhere please quickly three Please double up, double up, rush, rush, run and come. We're out of time, but this is a decision that is eternal. Come and encounter Jesus. God bless you. Come and encounter the power of God. Come and have a fresh start with him. He that did not withhold his only son, but offered him freely, how much more with him shall he give us all things? Keep coming. Three. Four. Five. Praise God. If you're coming, join them quickly. Those of you here in the front, I salute you. I congratulate you. While the rest are making their way coming, please, wherever you are, run, come. Catch up quickly, quickly. Are you rushing, please? Help us so that we can be very fast. We need to attend to people after service. I'd like you to lift your right hand and say this convincingly. Say this passionately. Say this sincerely. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you that you died for me you gave your life for me it's a powerful prayer you are praying tonight i have heard your word and i believe in you i receive eternal life into my spirit and i declare that jesus is lord over my life i believe that god raised him from the dead and i declare that eternal life is mine today right now i am a child of god my sins are forgiven i have the life of christ in me in the name of jesus keep your hands lifted i stretch my hands in the name of jesus i declare your sins forgiven i set you free now by the power of the holy spirit and i decree and declare that you begin to enjoy the ministry of the holy spirit in your life i pray for you that you will know the lord like never before I declare that the power of sin, the power of the flesh, the power of Satan is destroyed completely from your life in the name of Jesus. I declare that you have a new start from tonight and the Lord himself will continually be glorified in your life. You go forward ever and backward never in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you and thank you. A gentleman is waving his hands. I want all of you to just follow them. They'll have your details. Appreciate you on our behalf. God bless you. Appreciate them quickly. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.